tonight at 11, flames consumed two structures in Redding just hours ago. What we know and what we're learning. A trailer caught fire on the road today. How officials stopped it from spreading to vegetation. It's a national night out. We caught up with our local law enforcement to talk about what tonight means. All that and more starts right now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. have an update on the structure fire that broke out just hours ago in Shasta County. According to the Reading Fire Department, two structures were involved off of Grove Street near the Shell gas station and the Kia dealership. Fire officials extinguished the flames at around 530 this evening. No word yet on what caused the fire. Good evening. Welcome to the North States News at 11. I'm Ariana Martinez. We start in Tehama County where we've learned the five names of the people, including a pregnant woman who were killed in a crash on Interstate 5 in Corning on Saturday. The crash happened near Liberal Avenue when a car crashed the median and hit a pickup truck head on. The driver of the truck was killed, 52 year old Randall Schreifer of Morgan Hill, a former San Jose police captain. His passenger survived, but with major injuries. All four people in the infinity died. Their 46 year old Sean Christian, 47 year old Thomas Bruce, 36 year old Patty Larson and her unborn baby, along with an eight year old girl. The highway patrol says none of the four in the car were wearing seatbelts. In Placer County, traffic was held up in Auburn after a small trailer caught fire this morning. According to Cal Fire, this happened on Interstate 80. The U-Haul caught fire spreading to nearby vegetation. Luckily, firefighters were able to stop forward progress. No injuries were reported. And now let's head to the Weather Center with first alert meteorologist Brian Schofield. Brian, we want to see that moon. You know, tell us more <laughs> right? about it. Are we getting a little too excited about May? <laughs> Later on, we're going to explain why you should be excited about it. Because what does it mean to you, right? It will mean something when we get done with it. Yes. Good, good enough. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what's brewing. That is a full moon tonight, but it's so much more. A moon and more, we'll, we'll get to that. 81 degrees, very nice temperature right now. You know, we've been blessed with temperatures below normal and they stay below normal and, and we even turn them down a little bit more below normal for tomorrow. But today, below normal again, obviously, but by degree, we're gonna take this down a few more degrees. We're not done. 90 Mount Shasta, 99 Red Bluff, 99 for Redding. Lower 90s again for Chico, just nice to see. 96 in Corning, that was the warm spot along with Oroville. And of course, wind, not really a big deal for tonight. We may have another day of those stronger breezes, but I'll tell you, then they'll come to an end. There's your thunderstorm activity. We're kind of on storm watch, and I say that because we're talking about maybe some dry lightning, and that's always a danger. So that's definitely part of our weather headlines, and this is how it goes. The highs, yeah, you bet they're dropping. Breezes, oh, they're going to be stopping, and those storms will be popping. Is that too much? We'll have that for you coming up in your first alert forecast. Now turning to crime, two people were arrested in Redding this morning during a traffic stop. According to the Redding Police Department, a Chevy Silverado reportedly ran a stop sign at Hartnell and Alta Mesa Drive about 9 this morning. Officers say they saw what looked like a gun between the driver's seat and center console. Two rifles, a shotgun and a handgun with no serial numbers were found. 47-year-old Ryan Bray and 33-year-old Erica Wilson, a convicted felon, both of Siskiyou County, were booked into the Shasta County Jail. Three people, including a teenager, have been arrested by Chico Police in connection to a string of thefts at Home Depot. The first theft was March 31st, when police say 55-year-old Diane Morgan, 42-year-old Richard Morgan, and 18-year-old Cameron Barnett stole $1,100 worth of items. They hit the Home Depot on Notre Dame Boulevard again a week later on April 7th. Home Depot's loss prevention recognized them from similar thefts in Red Bluff and Sacramento. The 18 year old was caught in Shasta County in early July. The other two were caught in Siskiyou County last Wednesday with more than $8,300 in stolen items. On the North Coast, the Humboldt County Drug Task Force served a search warrant which led to one arrest in Fortuna. According to the Humboldt County Drug Task Force, after a multi-week investigation, they served a search warrant on the 2000 block of Hannah Court Monday. 
Once inside, agents found 47-year-old Jesse Rollins Lislau and detained him without incident. They also found two young children who were removed from the home. During the search of the home, agents found 1.2 pounds of meth, 5 grams of cocaine, a digital scale, and over $4,000 in cash. Some of the drugs being stored in the same areas as snacks for the children, as well as other areas accessible to children. Child welfare services were contacted and the children were released to a family member. LaSalle was booked into the Humboldt County Jail on several charges. It's National Night Out and this is a celebration across the country to help law enforcement connect with the community. We've had several events here in the North State. The Anderson Police Department hosted an event at River Park. Our reporter Tyler Van Dyke was out there earlier this evening and spoke to one of the officers about what today means for law enforcement. Um, all across the nation, um, neighborhood watches, different community organizations host block parties, uh, police departments, city and county leadership go out and kind of, it gives a good opportunity to interact with the public in a positive way. We weren't the only ones having fun in Shasta County. In Siskiyou County, CHP officers went head to head in a tug of war earlier this evening. Look at those kids. They're just so strong. The kids were vicious tonight. Maybe CHP will do better next time. Oh, poor guys. <laughs> Coming up, Glenn County supervisors discussed potentially switching to hand counting ballots in local elections. We have the full story in just a few minutes. But first, here's a live look at Redding from our Hasselrood Lost Sky Cam. Just so beautiful, that light shining off of the bay. This is your North States News. President Donald Trump has been indicted on four counts for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. They include conspiracy to defraud the United States. The charges come from special counsel Jack Smith's office more than two and a half years after the January 6th Capitol insurrection. The former president has now been indicted in three different investigations since leaving the White House. He took to social media to talk about his situation. He calls it, quote, fake indictment and prosecutorial misconduct. This is the third indictment of the former president. More could be coming. He was first indicted in March on New York State charges related to a hush money payment to an adult film star in 2016, where he faces 34 counts of falsifying business records. He was then indicted by a Miami federal grand jury in June for taking classified documents from the White House and resisting the government's attempts to retrieve them. There he faces 40 counts, including willful retention and conspiracy to obstruct justice. An indictment could be coming out of Georgia, where a grand jury is investigating his alleged efforts to overturn the state's 2020 election outcome. In each case, the former president says he's not guilty. Let's look locally. We've got the entire Shasta County Jail reopened. That's the message from a large group of people at today's Board of Supervisors meeting. Mike Mangus was there to break it all down for us. Law enforcement and elected officials all approached the dais to recognize the complexity of the issue, but to ask supervisors to find a solution to what they call a critically understaffed jail. Anderson Mayor Mike Gallagher spoke for the group. We all have personally seen the negative impact on public safety this closure is causing. The lack of jail space has caused a limited deterrent effect on the criminal population. Repeat and chronic offenders are not being retained and held accountable for their actions that plague our communities. Victims are not getting closure and are losing faith in the justice system as the persons responsible for the crimes against them are time and time again being released. Sheriff Michael Johnson is dealing with a family issue that prevented him from being at the meeting, but he gave us this statement. I am grateful for the support of our cities and community for getting the jail floor open. Jail staffing, custody operations, and reopening the level remain the number one priorities of this agency. Our command staff has worked tirelessly putting forth staffing proposals, launching multi-state recruitment efforts, working on internal morale, working conditions, and offering hiring incentives. We routinely put different ideas in place to overcome our situation. We have hired 45 employees at the jail and lost 48 over roughly the last year and a half. The retention percentages are staggering. Timely and not calculated, 
is the support that came forward to the Board of Supervisors today. We have been working on yet another staffing proposal to bring forward to the Board of Supervisors. We have been in close contact with the Board of Supervisors and working together to come up with a plan. Our newest effort comes after research and exampled by other successful county jail models. That proposal is tentatively scheduled to be agendized for August 15, 2023. I understand today the Board of Supervisors respectfully tabled that plan until my personal matter could be realized. I am grateful for their consideration. The board voted to bring the jail situation back for discussion as soon as possible. Like their neighbors to the north in Shasta County, Glenn County supervisors discussed potentially switching to hand counting ballots in local elections today. Just months after Shasta County's controversial move to get rid of Dominion voting machines, some Glenn County residents are urging their supervisors to do the same. The Glenn County Freedom Coalition hopes to eliminate voting machines and, quote, clean up voter rolls to reduce fraud. Residents and supervisors were concerned about AB 969, a bill currently in committee that would prevent counties over 1,000 people from hand counting ballots. As far as making the change from any system right now, I really want to see what finally happens with this AB 969. I don't want us to spend a bunch of money going in a certain direction and then all of a sudden the state law says we can't. Even if we take the most stringent steps, we're still turning it over to the state of California. And uh, uh, I think through the through that process, um, I don't know if anybody uh, up in the Northern California area trusts the state of California. So, uh, it is what it is. Last year, CISA, a federally cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency, publicly stated that while Dominion machines may have some vulnerabilities, the agency found no evidence that those vulnerabilities have been exploited in any elections. The board overall was receptive to the public's outcry. Let's start off the morning in the 60s area wide. It'll be so nice across the valley and our temperatures don't really soar so much. I mean, we do end off the day in the 90s, but middle 90s instead of upper 90s or low 100s. Big changes on the way after that as we do warm things up quite a bit in your first word forecast. Just a, a bear was caught on camera casually taking a stroll in someone's backyard. That's next. It's time to chime. This is a picture of tonight's supermoon. This was submitted by Julie Pontani. Thank you, Julie, for sending that in. Brian Schofield is in the Weather Center with more information on the moon sturgeon supermoon. Hey, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Why should you care about this, right? Well, let's talk about these supermoons. Supermoons. You notice I said plural there? I want to throw something in here. Okay, so we're in August. We're getting two full moons in August. Right? That's pretty cool. The first one, which you're experiencing tonight, sturgeon moon. Second one is a blue moon. Both are super moons, which means they're at their closest point to the Earth, so they should look much brighter. But the second one is even more interesting. To get a, a blue moon, super moon combination right there, that doesn't happen very often. Next time you'll see that happen will be 2032. And really, kind of hold your camera out for the second one, because this one, with the blue moon, it won't be blue. But either way, it will be brighter of the two. That's one you want to wait for. All right, back to you. Thanks, Brian. Once in a blue moon, right? Yep, exactly. This is something you may not want to see just a few steps outside your front door. A South Carolina man shot this video of a bear who appears to be just out for a leisurely stroll. Take a look. Martin Bishop says he's heard about a bear sighting in the past weeks. Even though he's seen deer, turkeys, and red foxes in his yard, he still didn't expect to see a bear. Part of the reason the bear stopped by might be because his house backs up to a river. Bishop is calm about the encounter. He says he hopes the bear finds a nice, undisturbed place to live nearby. Last year, there was a similar situation in Shasta Lake. I was just sitting here and I heard a noise. I look out my window and the bear is trying to get up in my bird feeder. This is video submitted by Luke Martinez on Chime In last year. As we can see, a black bear was spotted roaming his yard in the city of Shasta Lake. The bear was seen drinking water on the property before getting scared off and running away. 
This mm. is a great reminder this to take precautions in the more rural areas of the North State. Also, to send us all of your pictures and videos on Chime In. Now, let's head to First Alert Meteorologist Brian Schofield in the Weather Center for a look at our weather. Brian, it's been pretty quiet weather-wise, just a little hot. Are there any chances for storms? Yes, actually, we're going to talk more about that because whereas we're not going to get widespread storms, some isolated ones with lightning, yeah, we're going to talk about, you know, that's always a fire danger. So I'm focusing so much on the moon. You know, that's a moray, right? Is it hitting your eye like a big pizza pie? No, okay, anyway. So, uh, upper 70s right now. Very nice right now. I mean, so pleasant. Shingletown, look at those 60s right there. That's just beyond belief. For summer, a summertime, it's not, that's not your overnight low. It's spectacular, although nice numbers. Okay, so the winds have calmed down tonight. They'll be back up again for tomorrow, but after midweek, not as much. So the winds really are going to be stopping quite a bit. So it'll be nice to see them just kind of wind down. So when we do get some thunderstorms, we don't necessarily see those widespread winds. How about the smoke forecast? Looks like nothing doing right now, but watch. It does start to get a little more interesting again. That takes till the overnight hours into Thursday. Uh, but in the valley itself, we only see the light category, but smoke forecast really keeps it stronger into the moderate category for Del Norte and parts of Humboldt as it continues through the air, even for late morning as well. All right, so here's some thunderstorms we've been watching. We've been kind of keeping our eyes on them. Uh, now we'll get a little bit of a glancing blow, but it really won't be necessarily just from uh, east to west. We'll just get a few that will pop up over the upper elevations. That's kind of what we're planning. It takes till Thursday to get them here, so I don't see them happening tomorrow. But I do see some moisture sliding in just enough, enough lift to really get them going. I'll show you what that means. Precision cast right there. Nothing tomorrow. We saw some higher thin clouds today, some mid-level clouds looking good. But here we go, right about there. See, that doesn't look like much. You're going, Brian, why are we even talking about them? It's those dry lightning strikes that we're concerned about. That's why we're talking about them. But it doesn't look like much rain with them. That's the problem. Uh, Modoc County as well. Siskiyou, obviously, parts of uh, Trinity County. You can do the uh, Trinity Alps as well, you folks there. Keep that in mind that we'll be watching, again, kind of on storm alert. Certainly, it'll give you the first alert if something happens. But after that, we don't see anything happening. Because if anything, it's all the coast that gets all the cloud cover and all the moisture there. So along the coast, because we haven't had much of an offshore flow, the temperatures have been about the same. A little warmer this weekend, but everyone warms up this weekend. For tonight, those are some nice numbers there. 40s for the upper elevations and 50s. Shingletown, you're in the 60s now. 63 Red Bluff, 63 Oroville overnight. Nice. Do a quick round robin of these temperatures. Middle 80s, even some upper 80s to right around 90, but most places will sit just below that 90 degree mark, and that's what we saw. Plenty of 90s today, middle 90s across the board as well, so not bad at all. Give you the next seven days, and you'll see that we bumped up the numbers from middle 90s, which is just spectacular for summer, to right there, 108. Our apex of heat certainly will be Sunday for most areas. You can see right there, we'll drop it a little bit uh, by early next week, but it'll still be warm. So wrapped around the weekend, we've got the warmest temperatures we've had in a week and a half, but they're not 113s and we're okay with that. I'll tell you that. So uh, middle 60s pop up and of course those lower 70s through the weekend. So of course the weekend is lots of sunshine and lots of warmth. Back to you. Shasta Regional Medical Center in Reading has received two more major medical awards, this time in heart-related care. SRMC was given a bronze award by the American Heart Association, along with being certified again as a chest pain center by the American College of Cardiology. These accreditations are huge milestones for any hospital, but are difficult to maintain from year to year. For a local community hospital like Shasta Regional, these awards help prove their status as a top care facility in our region. This community is, you know, it's, we have an aging population, we have a lot of diabetes here, there's a lot of heart disease, there's a lot of peripheral vascular disease as well, and so you want to be cognizant of that, get in, get screened. Every year we're going to be offering community education, we're going to be continuing to meeting, we're going to continue to go over our metrics to make sure we're the best. Fetch says 80% of people in Shasta County live closer to Shasta Regional than to Mercy Hospital. So it's important for their hospital to be ready and recognized for the vast work they do. Jessica says their team's response to any possible heart problem is quick and thorough because time is muscle. Shasta Regional will maintain their latest accreditation as a chest pain center through 2026. The Redding Rancheria is hosting its annual health fair tomorrow. From 9 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon, the health event will host a variety of activities, including health screenings that are available at no cost. 
The fair also includes vendors and representatives promoting wellness and cultural connections. The event will take place in the Wind River Event Center and at Redding Rancheria's Tribal Office. For more information on the event and what to expect and what the exact health screenings are you can get for free, you can visit our website at krcrtv.com. After the break, two major fires triggering evacuations in the U.S., one in Washington, another in California. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back, we're looking at two fires currently burning in the U.S. The Eagle Bluff fire on the right is burning on the U.S.-Canadian border in Washington. It's grown to more than 15,000 acres since it started last Saturday. Fire officials are reporting loss of structures, putting evacuation orders in place over the weekend. It's currently 10% contained. On the left, the York Fire is currently at a little more than 80,000 acres. It sparked on Friday. Officials say it's 23% contained. Today, firefighters got a little bit of relief. This morning, there was heavy downpour in San Bernardino County, which helped crews make progress. Both are vegetation fires. Authorities are saying they are moving at a fast rate of speed. This is making working conditions especially hard for the firefighters on the ground. Evacuation orders are forcing people out of their homes. Reporter Mike Valero spoke to residents near the fire. Furious flames scorching the earth, spewing thick, toxic smoke, creating an apocalyptic-like landscape along the U.S.-Canada border in Washington. You can actually feel the heat from it, you know, across the lake. And we also could hear the roar from the fire at, at one point, too, as it would hit the bigger clumps of trees. The raging flames of the Eagle Bluff fire threatening properties and triggering evacuations. The first priority is always human life and safety. It's impressive. It's scary. But it's it's fascinating to watch how fast it moves and then how you'll be watching it. And then about 100 meters ahead, uh, a spark will happen and another tree will go up. And then the, the, the main bulk of the fire catches up to that. And it was moving so fast north. It's a similar situation on the California-Nevada border. There's a haze. Nothing you can't see ahead. I mean, you can't see the mountain. With people fleeing the flames of the York fire. We've got all of our animals that we could take with us. Some of them we had to turn loose, the cattle, you know, and the sheep. Forceful winds are fueling the fires. The extreme weather creating extremely dangerous conditions, spawning a vortex of flames and smoke. People's lives are, in, you know, at stake. The people fighting the fires. It's a hazard. Fire and wind is not mixed. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. The York Fire is also threatening thousands of trees in southwest California. Thousands of Joshua trees are expected to be lost to the wildfire. The Joshua plants grow only one to two, three inches a year. According to the California director of the Western Watershed Project, it's an organization that works to protect and restore watersheds on this side of the country. It will take a lifetime to get those mature, big Joshua tree forests back. Some are fire resistant, and if the flames are not too hot, they will stump sprout or they will reseed. This is pretty devastating. It will grow back, but it might take decades to see this desert come back. The fire is also threatening the Joshua trees in Nevada. In the meantime, the fire continues to burn. Resources from the National Park Service Bureau of Land Management and San Bernardino Fire Protection District are battling the flames. We'll be right back. Oh, those goats. They got a lot of airtime this time of year. We have them all over the North State. This is in Glendale. This city has 300 goats, environmentally friendly firefighters, you can call them that. They're low maintenance alternative to herbicides and heavy machinery. The wet weather last winter has proved plenty for them to eat. I love those stories. Good stuff. Yes. <laughs> Oh, it's my turn? Oh, yeah, you're, just, you're just done. You're, I'm done, Brian. Anyway, temperatures dropping, then they're back up again. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Have a great night, North State.